Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and we're standing in front of the Bridgeport Mill, and this is short subjects number five, talking about drill chucks on the Bridgeport. I touched on this subject briefly in number four, bad setups, and I told you to never hold an end mill in a drill chuck. It must be held in a collet or a tool holder like this. Now why don't we use a drill chuck? There's actually three reasons. Let me enumerate. First of all, look at how much tool and chuck is hanging out of the spindle. About six inches. Now if you're using a regular R8 collet, it would sit in there like that, and you'd reduce it by about four inches or so, so you have much more rigidity. So that alone is a reason not to use a drill chuck. Now this drill chuck is held in with an R8 shank, but you may be using drill chucks that have straight shanks or taper shanks and are being held in Bridgeport collets. Now reason two is that a drill chuck is not made to hold end mills which have very, very hard shanks and the three jaws will not bite into the shank at all whereas drills, regular jobbers drills like this, have relatively soft shanks on them compared to the cutting end of it, as evidenced by many drills that you probably have that are scarred. That just shows you how soft they are. Also, a drill chuck would be holding your cutter by really only three points, the three jaws, one, two, three, rather than a collet or the other type of cutter holder that uses a set screw, the Weldon type. And since the end mill is being held just by the three jaws, it is liable to creep down on, to, on you into your work or into the work table, as I talked about in the previous video. And now number three is probably the most important reason not to use a drill chuck. Remember that most drill chucks are mounted onto their arbors with a Jacobs taper. Now that's fine for drilling. Straight up and down. Works great. They never come loose. But when you start to mill with a cutter to the side, they're very likely to come loose from this taper. And when I was teaching, I can still visualize how many of these were rolling around on the floor. Finally, I had to hide the chucks and tell the kids you're using collets or tool holders only. That's kind of scary when that happens, and when it hits the floor, it'll probably either break the cutter off or certainly dull it, and it could hit somebody and cause serious bodily injury. And yes, you can buy Jacob's chucks that have threads, and you could use a threaded arbor as opposed to the taper, but these are typically made for portable drills. So that's probably not going to come up, but I guarantee that these come loose. I had even tried using Loctite on them as a stopgap um, measure when I didn't have the right collets, and it's, they'll still come out. So in comparing these two, which do you think is the obvious choice? Look at how long this is. Of course, this is a big chuck, too, and it's an extra long end mill, but this is the type of setup that you want to use that will look like that for much better results in your shop. So in review, do not hold end mills in drill chucks. I hope this little tidbit helped you in your shop. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now.